This is a project that I've been working on that deals with machine learning, uh, Python, and Unity. And I thought I would go ahead and share uh, the project. I did an earlier recording and I say uh a lot. That's probably irritating to some people. This particular project is a cart pole example. You can do this in OpenAI in Python, but at the end of the day, it doesn't run in Unity. And that's where I run my stuff. The example that I got online looked pretty sexy except for it wasn't a complete solution. What you're looking at is a standard ML agents Unity uh, project. It's already got the TensorFlow Unity TensorFlow plugin installed and other examples in here can run. Uh, this isn't going to be a hand-holding session on what machine learning is and Unity. This is a little, little bit advanced, so bear with me. But I wanted to post this video on how to drill down and make the Unity machine learning environment use models other than what they provide. And Unity has done some huge work that it's it's totally fascinating, but they don't go into a lot of detail of what these models are and a lot of theory behind them, like the PPO model that comes out of the box. And you'll have to go online and do that research on your own to kind of get a grasp of what's going on. But these models can do some amazing things. This particular project, uh, the code that's running right here, wasn't a complete solution but it was a lot of code and I'm just gonna go through how I got it to work. Now this is cart pole. This is a, a model predictive control uh, example and um, what you're basically seeing is the cart is moving back and forth and it's balancing and it's using a deep uh, neural net model to do that called Actor Critic. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on what Actor Critic is, uh, but you can go online and you can uh, learn about it. And you can see it right here uh, working. You can also do this, like I said, in OpenAI. But, uh, my projects deal with things inside of Unity because it's a game engine. So uh, the breakthrough today was getting, I had already built this project. It didn't work out of the box from the zip file. Uh, there wasn't a solution. There was just a bunch of files and I had to figure out how to make the thing work. Uh, the, the big breakthrough today was mapping when you communicate with TensorFlow uh, neural net model, you gotta know how to push the variables into the model to get a prediction out. And what we see here is this input underscore one and this output underscore, uh, 
underscore node zero. This is the input, this is the output, and that was one of the hardest parts of getting this thing to work. But I'm, I'm gracious to the original author that put a lot of this together. He just didn't have it in a, a seamless, uh, cohesive environment. I still don't either, uh, but if you try to download the Unity ML agents, you're not going to get this type of a model either. So that's kind of the cool thing uh, with this video. So uh, I basically had to, you know, create some empties and then add the the brain scripts. You know, obviously, you know, create this folder. You see these prefabs. The scene is what I created. And then you have the scripts from the author, and then I created this folder called TF Models. Disregard these two models, uh, they don't mean anything. Uh, this model is the secret sauce. And what, how this works, uh, just to give uh, people a little bit, you know, you should know this already. This is an internal model. And what that means is, is that the TensorFlow Unity plugin is going to load this model and send these what they call observations. Uh, but the thing, all you need to know is this is what's going into the model and this is what's coming out. Uh, the other thing I kind of guessed at and got right was the uh, observation type, uh, but I I kind of figured that out looking at uh, the guy's Python code. So I'll we'll drop that down and we're going to pull this folder uh, open. And uh, this is basically part, another part of a zip file that the author posted. And uh, there are some folders that I added. Uh, one is the ML agents, uh, which is literally a download uh, from uh, uh, Unity. Uh, and I think it's the version 5. And we can go on there. We can look and we see that. And this is what basically drives the executable. So this has to be in this folder. Then you have this env. Uh, directory. Well, this is a compiled version of what we just saw uh, in Unity, but the difference is that this executable is using an external brain, not an internal brain. And what that means is, is that Python is going to control and send data and get data back from this executable while it's training and that's how the that's why you need this folder uh, and that's how uh, the unity uh, system works as of you know 2019 now what the author did is he provided two different uh, Python files that will train the actor it will build and train the actor critic model. And this is way over my head, but it's a great model. Uh, and there's a TensorFlow version, which I couldn't get to work. And then the, the Eureka uh, this morning was, I figured out how to get the Keras version to work. Now both these Python files will, uh, we'll just go ahead and run this one they are going to build a model, run the executable, and send and receive data from it. That, that's how this stuff works. So there's the dump, uh, you know, and you can look at the Python code. And there you go. Uh, this thing is uh, 
it's training right now. As you can see, there's more uh, cart poles than in the uh, my version. It doesn't really matter, uh, but it, it thinks there's 10 of them. And it's sitting there, and but the thing is, is that this is running through several episodes, and the way the actor critic works is it builds up a memory of what it's doing, and then it trains uh, the model uh, the two, and it uses two different models to do it. It's very complex. It took me a couple of weeks uh, just to try to figure out how. Uh, it's working so it's not even writing the model out right now and actually the codes turned off but uh, when I ran this and I looked at what was going on you can kind of figure out visual observations none uh, and then we have the uh, vector observations uh, let's see the that's the data that's uh, going into the model and th that has to do with all the torque and the a velocity angular velocity you'll you'll have to go online and and read about how actor credit critic works uh, but it doesn't really matter if you can't get this model saved and converted and loaded into unity and that's what this video is all about uh, I will go over uh, this particular example uh, and uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on it but the author did a great job on this uh, this is uh, a noise class that you a lot of people have to use with these types of models Oppenheimer whatever it's called and it's called something else it's a, a stochastic noise uh, mean reversion function You're gonna have to look it up figure it out uh, so here's the agent and uh, but everywhere in here as we're looking you notice there isn't anything that says input underscore one or output underscore node zero input underscore one output underscore node zero that's the hard part of getting these projects to work uh, and I don't know why they do this I think you can name these l layers I'm not going to go into detail on Keras or you know building models in Keras. You should already know this uh, if you're watching this video. You know, I hate to be like that. Uh, but the Eureka moment uh, this morning, since this creates and saves, bear with me, it can save two different models. I was like, well which one has the input and output and then I read the code and I read the code and I read the code and then it finally clicked that uh, when you look at the agent and you should already know how the step environment works but right in here this action well that's the action bear with me get action actor predict right in here this is the actor model and it says get action I said oh I don't need to worry about the critic model I, I thought I had to merge these models uh, for some reason uh, but I don't I only care about the actor model and you can see right here that Python class and it it could save them and we could save it out you know if it does enough episodes and, and we could keep training this model these models but see you have two of them here and that's what was throwing me off the TensorFlow version it had one 
and it would dump everything in here. But in TensorFlow, this is a checkpoint. This isn't a model. And you have to convert this right code to convert that. And that's what was confusing me. TensorFlow. And if you can uh, find this on the internet, you can pull this code down. You still won't see the inputs and the outputs. You can't, you know, the, the guy's project wasn't a full loop, which is you train and then you run it inside of Unity's. That's what this video is all about. So, uh, the Keras version made a little bit more sense, and I said, oh, it's the actor model. That's the only one I need to worry about. And this is how I found that out. Uh, there is uh, this article right here on Medium that shows you how to inspect TensorFlow models. Now, bear with me. I know you're saying, well, wait a minute, that's a Keras model. Yeah, I know. Well, we can convert a Keras model to TensorFlow. Once you convert it, then you can import it uh, into TensorBoard. You should have that installed. Uh, you should read this article. He goes into how uh, to do that. Uh, so we're going to skip right now converting the model and just this is the converted model protobuf uh, the other infuriating thing with me in unity is that it won't take the dot pb uh, it wants to see dot bytes these two are the same files I, I just renamed them you know copied it into a folder, went in here, you know, went into graph model, you know, clicked on it. Even though it says H5 and you're thinking, oh my God, that's that's a, a Keras. No, it's not. It's It has been converted. Uh, but if you use their environment, this all magically happens and you don't really know what's going on it's just things start moving on the screen and you're but you don't understand really how it works so uh, this medium ex uh, article will tell you how to get the import I have made it you know a couple batch files you know real simple convert you know convert this thing so it'll go into ten, tensor board and then we got then we want to run tensor board uh, but then when you run tensor board uh, it doesn't automatically go to the browser which is irritating you know um, so here's tensor board it's running you know but you have to do this just that infuriates me uh, that's what I call tribal knowledge. You know, it's it's just dumb. Anyway, then okay, TensorBoard comes up, and the reason why we're running TensorBoard is we want to look inside of this model to figure out what are the names of the inputs and outputs. So you got a double click import. Thank you very much. You got to watch videos to figure that out. Come on, Google, amp it up. You have the input. Now you see it. Input underscore one. Input underscore one. Output. Output underscore node zero. There you go. That that is what I figured out this morning. That's why the thing runs. So there you go. That's a trained uh, model. It was built and trained in Keras. Again, this is internal now. Uh, the other thing we could do is we could literally click this to external 
and compile this thing and run it and connect it up to the environment uh, and it would probably work anyway so we get rid of that so like I said it's Keras you know it creates these things then I figured out well it's the actor model okay I know how to convert a Keras model to a TensorFlow model uh, and that is in here do that then it creates that but you have to rename that to bytes so unity will load it then you take that and you copy it into your uh, unity uh, uh, tensorflow models directory that you created hopefully anyway as you could tell uh, it's very frustrating but again you if you download the latest ML agents from unity the, they change it constantly and not only that uh, it doesn't have an actor critic model so you couldn't do this but now you can because you understand a little bit more about how this uh, stuff works uh, I have another video uh, the TF Jam that uses uh, some of this and it doesn't even use the environment the the unity environment it, it just uses Keras and it just trains the model uh, it's not as uh, you know accurate but and, and it's a different it's a simple linear regression uh, model but uh, when I made that video and I figured that out that's how I found this online I didn't write this I found it uh, but so you know anybody that uh, you should already know how to do a, a lot at least do the PPO model you know proximal something optimization model <coughs> on the unity ML agents uh, download and to see how that stuff works but then as soon as you want to do advanced or more or different types of models uh, you can refer to this video and come back uh, I don't get a lot of views on this stuff I'm just trying to you know give back to the community um, I don't have a GitHub for any of this stuff if people uh, view the video and uh, get serious about it uh, meaning they've already got this environment set up and they can ar already do TensorFlow uh, plug-in with ML agents and they want to try something different then uh, I'll you know upload the code uh, you you can Google this stuff. This is all, you know, it, it's all online. Uh, you just got to know how to uh, pull it together. So anyway, that was my big thing this morning. I don't spend all day and night on, uh, you know, the Unity stuff with ML. I do read uh, extensive uh, research on the models because that's that's where it's at. And, uh, you know, but they still, when they talk about actor critic, uh, and then the, this, uh, you know, noising algorithm, they have to shim in between. Uh, it's, it's way, it's way over my head, but I know enough about it to where I can get to here. So I'm thankful for the author. You can obviously Google uh, some of this uh, what you see on the screen and find the author uh, the uh, that was a lot of work and a lot of understanding but you gotta you gotta you know you gotta not only hit the home run but you gotta run all the way around to the bases that's what this video is all about which is 
you know, it's a code review. It's taking some good stuff from, uh, you know, a really uh, awesome uh, uh, programmer. Uh, but he didn't go all the way, and and he probably thought, well, if you don't know how to do this, then whatever. But uh, still, uh, you want to see something like this on the screen, uh, you know, before you you know go to uh, to all this effort. The reason why I'm interested in this model is you can use it for several different types of uh, model pr predictive control. So it's very important to get it to work. Uh, as you can see here, uh, you can add these things together and now you can have a self-balancing biped. There's no reason why you can't do that uh, with this, this stuff. But the main thing is you got to know how to integrate it. Uh, so anyway, if you've made it all the way to the end, you're awesome. I uh, apologize for any stuttering and uh, redundant uh, blabbing, but I just wanted to get this out uh, because there's going to be people out there that are interested in doing custom models uh, and the Unity ML Agent framework isn't going to, you know, do everything for them. So you got to drill down figure out how this stuff really works uh, and make it do what you want. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.